The Chamorro creation story starts with the brother and sister gods, Ponten and Fotna. As Ponten was dying, he told Fotna to use his body to create the world. His body was formed into the rich soiled land, his back into the light blue skies, his right eye into the luminous moon, his left eye into the bright sun, and his eyebrows into colorful rainbows. When she finished, Fotna cried tears that poured to make the oceans. Grieving her brother, she transformed into full rock where life arose. The story of Ponten and Fotna gives insight into ancient Chamorro beliefs and reflects the qualities of ancient Chamorro society, such as the equality of man and woman, interdependence, and inafat maulik. The ancient Chamorros believed that their surroundings were filled with spirits and their spirituality revolved around the veneration of the dead. When a relative passes, they are wrapped with mats made out of palm leaves and buried with their feet facing the coast. Though there is no specific information as to why they face the coast, it was a continued practice. The grave itself was decorated with flowers, shells, and valuables. Laddie stones in the Marianas are sacred, possibly serving as gravestones, which is why the Laddie is considered to house Aniti, or spirits. The Chamorros also kept the skulls of their relatives in their homes, coinciding with the maintained respect for the Tata Mona, or the people before, as they brought protection. The Tetsas, Surahanus, Makanas, and Kakanas were the spiritual figures of ancient Chamorro society. The Tetsas served as spiritual leaders that directed people in the reciting of Tanaitai at ceremonies. Suruhanus were the natural healers, and the Makana and Kakana were shamans with magical powers. The Suruhanus used halis and hagunsiha, roots and leaves, to make medicine. They retrieved these from the Halumtanu, the jungle. It is believed that they were the only people that were able to retrieve it without angering the Tautau Mona. The Makana and Kakana did rituals with ancestral skulls for bountiful harvest and fish, and were able to cast spells on people using their body waste. These ancient spiritual practices were soon threatened when the Spanish colonized Guam. Ferdinand Magellan in 1521 and Miguel Lopez de Legazpi claimed the island under the Spanish crown in 1565, yet active colonization had begun in 1668. Father Diego Luis de San Vitoris, a Jesuit priest, had the desire to spread Christianity to the Chamorros, as he believed them to be godless islanders. The Chamorros initially welcomed the missionaries. San Vitoris had studied Chamorro and translated hymns and prayers and also conducted sermons. The first Chamorros to be baptized was an infant daughter and Magalahi Kapuha. Kapuha gave land to Father San Vitoris to establish the first Catholic church in Hagatnya, dedicated as Dolce Nombre de Maria, the sweet name of Mary. It is now called the Dolce Nombre de Maria Cathedral Basilica. As the number of converts had increased, radical approaches were taken on behalf of the missionaries. The Jesuit missionaries condemned practices that were immoral, such as the veneration of ancestors and the worship of spirits. Other cultural traditions, like unmarried sexual intercourse, were also condemned. The Chamorros did not want to relinquish traditional practices, so the priests responded with force, and the Chamorros did as well. The conflict became known as the Chamorro-Spanish Wars. During this time, Spanish soldiers, priests, and servants were killed and churches were burned down. Likewise, the Spanish killed hundreds of Chamorros. The skulls of ancestors were crushed, and the Chamorros were forced to go to mass. The spiritual leaders and figures of Chamorro society were also threatened. The Spanish claimed that they were devil worshippers. The Makanas, the leaders of religion, were obstacles in the Spanish's Chamorro conversion. With the wars approaching an end, the Chamorros had come to fully adopt Christianity. Unbeknownst to the Spanish, the similarities between practices served as the catalyst in the acceptance of the new religion. Ancient Chamorros' practice of keeping artifacts for ancestral spirits in their homes was similar to how Catholic saints had icons and images, and the practice of calling to spirits was similar in praying to saints during times of need. 
The Tremoros intertwined the old with the new, becoming Catholics that kept aspects of their ancient religion. Catholicism has not only influenced Shamar beliefs, but our way of life as well. With Catholic churches spanning across the island in every village, to rosaries in commemoration of our past loved ones, the introduction of Christianity has greatly impacted this island. A prime example being the December 8 procession. Every year, the island's Catholics gather at the Dulce Nombre de Maria Cathedral Basilica, to honor Santa Maria Kamelin, who miraculously arrived in Guam more than 300 years ago. For the past 70 years, islanders have come together to pray for more than four hours, offering our gratitude for her protection over the island. During the pandemic, times when procession could not happen, locals gathered outside their homes and their highways to watch as the statue was driven around the villages. Our government also made the day a federal holiday, illustrating the extent to which we are dedicated to the Catholic Church. In present-day Guam, 85% of the island is made up of Roman Catholics, and one takeaway from the Chamorros is their ability to make sure their faith never falters. Catholicism has truly been a force in uniting the people of Guam. The Chamorros have faced many foreign visitors who have attempted to completely erase and replace their culture. Due to their resilience and adaptability, they were able to maintain their culture. During Spanish colonization, the Chamorros were able to combine the new beliefs and traditions with their own. Nobenas, a nine-day rosary after the passing of a loved one, is one of those mixed traditions. Gathering the clans and families together in order to honor their loved one's existence. Along with gathering, they also pray the rosary or lisadzu and ask God to take care of their loved one's soul. Along with combining traditions, they also kept some intact. Tautamonas are the spirit of our ancestors. This belief goes back hundreds to thousands of years. As a people of this island, we believe that the spirits of our ancestors coexist with us on our island. As a sign of respect, we ask permission before entering land that is not our own. Whether it be entering the jungle or picking a plant from the beach, we always say, Gwela Dzengwelu dispenses it, which translates to, Grandmother and Grandfather, excuse me. Though this may not be entirely aligned with Catholicism, it provides a connection to the past for the natives of the island while allowing us to progress into the future and uphold the harmony through which our religious beliefs fosters. <laughs>